from there, when President Uhuru Kenyatta did not make it in the year 2002, I left for the private sector and did business for 15 years. And I was able to build from nothing a huge empire of business where I employed over 1,000 people. Later on, I was to join parliament as member of parliament five years. And after only five years in parliament, I became the, the president of this great republic. <laughs> the secret is simple. One, you must believe in God and you must have faith. You must have faith and your desires. Number two, you must put family first. The Bible tells us that they can bless you. You must respect your father and mother. And in an African setup, your mother and father is anybody else who is the age of your mother and father, including your teachers. You must respect your others. And that starts from another life. And that sets you into leadership. From there, you will be like me, a truthful man. <laughs> you must be honest. You must say it as it is and take the consequences, whatever they are. There is beauty in being truthful. Today, the people of Kenya know that Regardi Gashagwa is a truthful man. I say it as it is. Julius Kasarani, I stood before the whole world. I told the people of Kenya that we have inherited a broke country with nothing. I told the people of Kenya, even the stores, the rats had run away because there is nothing to eat. <laughs> Many people say that I'm a mischievous character. I am mannerless. I'm talking the truth in front of visitors. I said, with or without visitors, the truth remains truth. Today, I have been vindicted. What I said then has come to pass. And that is the hallmark of leadership. My good people, brothers and sisters, because leadership must start with Waking up early is a blessing. A good day starts early. And you know, and you for sure you know, any day you are woken up late, by evening your day has been messed up. But if you start early, you plan your day, make all the difficult decisions in the first three hours in the morning when your mind is fresh. Things because your mind is not functioning as good. That is leadership. What difficult decisions you want to make. If you wake up at 6, make sure by 9 a.m. you have agreed within yourself what is it that you must do. In the afternoon, do routine things, call your friends, because you don't No more things. Once you have self-discipline, you start on a good footing. I want to say self-discipline encompasses taking care of yourself. For you to become a leader, you must be alive. For you to own a company, you must be alive. And you must be healthy, both mentally If you don't take care of yourself, you take hard drugs, you take illicit alcohol, chances are 50% you die before your time. Send is that you become a zombie, a vegetable. You're just walking around, brooding. I was walking in the streets of Mombasa this morning at 6 a.m. So he was high on drugs. He could not even see where he's going at 6 a.m. in the morning. My good people, please keep off drugs. 
drugs will give you temporary relief from problems. By the time the drugs are through, the problems are even more. Let nobody cheat you that if you take drugs and you stay high, that the problems and the difficulties that you face have been solved. I want to speak to you at Pwani University and say that we face a big challenge in this country of drug abuse, drug and substance abuse among our people, including I want to plead with you. Please don't destroy yourself. Don't destroy your future. Because when you destroy yourself, your parents are devastated. The parents who are brought here today have brought a strong belief that one day you shall come to sort them out. Take care of your younger siblings and take care of your parents in old age. You kill not just your dreams, but the dreams of your parents. I want to say, and I emphasize, and I plead with you, that you cannot be a man or woman of substance when you are on drugs. Drugs will destroy your mental capacity. They will make you dependent, and drugs are expensive and you cannot sustain. And once you become addicted, you are ruined, you are destroyed. I want to persuade you that self-discipline, keeping away from drugs, keeping away from alcohol, is the beginning of your success in what you want to do in future. Let me say also, leader, in any sphere, you must be brave and courageous. Courage is an important ingredient of preparation to leadership. Cowards will never be anybody. Don't be cowardly. Take risks. All the But if you want to play safe, all the time. You hear this and this needs to be done, but there is a little danger. You shy away. You will be left behind. I want to say that you must be courageous. Once you have decided what is it that you want to do in your life, you must be courageous. And once you know you are on the right path, let nobody stop you. If anybody tries to stop you, please, Peter Nae. I, I am a great admirer of President William Samoy Ruto. Despite being his deputy and his principal assistant, I'm his great admirer. That guy is on another level. When he decided he wanted to be president, and he convinced himself that it is doable, it is possible, and that Kenyans needed to benefit from his leadership, many obstacles were put before him something called the deep state and the system. Everybody was against him, but he said, no retreat, no surrender, I am a man on a mission. He traversed the width and the breadth of this country with sheer determination, despite being denied facilities, transport, aircraft, fuel, policemen stopping his meetings, bringing down tents for his meetings, disabling public address systems. The man was determined, and he said, I'll push on, and nothing put on my path to leadership will distract me or deter me. And because of being and courageous and self-discipline, William Samuel Ruto, the son of a person, today is the President of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces. I must tell you, for you to be a good leader, you must practice 
terms of transparency and accountability. You must be transparent, you must be accountable. You must have integrity. There is no way you are colleague in your faculty will support you to be a leader of anything if when you are in school your work was to steal his pay. People must know that you are trans that you are accountable for your actions, that you are able to stand by what you mean, that what you say is what you mean, and what you mean is what you say. You must, as students of Kwan University, be accountable for you are staying here for four years. You must account for that time. We have seen many students where people have done harambes to set them out of the country to go and get university degrees, and they are escorted with buses to the airport when villagers have sold their chicken and sheep to raise money to take the road. And when they go abroad, they don't go to campus. They just hang around and do so many jobs. And then they keep on saying, now I'm in first year, when he is working in a factory, he says, now I'm in second year. From he says, I'm in third year. And then he gets a job at the airport, he says, I'm fourth year. The man has never been inside a campus. He is not accountable for what he is supposed to be. For you to succeed, you must be prepared to learn from success and failures. And what you do in the areas that you succeed, you build on them. All the great happenings, you sustain and build on them. Then on the facts, you learn from your failures and make sure that you don't repeat the mistakes of yesterday. You can't do the same thing all the time. Results. So if you have done something this year, next year you are failed, you cannot do it the third year. You must audit your performance, build on the failures and make sure that you don't repeat them. Again, for you to be a great leader, I want to persuade you today, my great people, that a bad decision is better than no decision at all. There are people who are so indecisive in life. You ask them, what are you doing today? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Uh, I think I want to go to Mombasa. No, no, no. Let me go to Kilifi. No, I'm thinking uh, I sleep today. No, 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 no. I think uh, let me do my homework. My girlfriend, you are lost. You can't make a decision. It's better to make a bad decision and live with it than to be indecisive. And if you think of a matter for two hours and you cannot make a decision, you are in trouble. You must audit yourself. You must be able to decide what you want in life and do it. And it's better even to make a bad decision and correct it later than to be indecisive. I want to persuade you great people that humility is a virtue second to none. In leadership, you must be a humble person. Don't trample on others when you succeed and show them how small they are and how big you are. Don't talk down to people. Be humble. Practice humility, it costs you nothing. Greet people by humility. You think you are so big, you are so successful, you find it is time wasting to greet. It costs you nothing to have a warm hardship with somebody that you have known or somebody that you have come across. And in the African setup, a thing 
and it's a good thing because it's part of our culture. So as you, as you become somebody, you become the CEO of the Kenya Post Authority, you become the Vice Chancellor of one University, you become the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, you become the Governor of Kilifi County, that is good, but remain humble. Be humble the way you are. Some people get some little money. Little. 2,000 shillings. <laughs> they start working with an academic angle. <laughs> Everybody knows they have money. As you succeed. Myself, I'm a living testimony. This morning, I was walking on Mamagera Drive, and I found a woman selling mandazi and she has been seeing me pass by. And today she had the courage and said, Wanagashagwa, please, can I greet your hand? I said, why not? I gave her my hand. She refused to let it go. She said, I have challenges. My two children are at home. What I sell here in Mandazi, the profit is only enough for my food. I said, OK, ma'am, I'm coming from exercise. I don't have anything with me. Come to my residence at 9. Then we have a discussion. That lady called Stella was able to come and see me. We had a great discussion. Of these troubles, everyone she has talked to has dismissed her. I listened to her, and we discussed what she needs to put her children back to school. And I told her, although I can pay the school fees, I would rather do it differently. I would rather help you to expand your business, make the profits, pay the school fees yourself because it's sustainable, and then you can move on with life. And I was able. <laughs> and we discussed what she needed to set up her business. I gave it to her. I'll check her on her when I come back to Mombasa and find out how she's doing. But she later called one of my assistants and said, after the photographs circulated in the social media, the headmaster who had chased her children away told her to bring them back to school <laughs> because she knows somehow she'll be able to pay. That is because I want to remain humble. Being a deputy president doesn't mean that I cannot stop by the road and talk to an old woman. This position has been given by God and the people of Kenya. So what? Why do people so huge, so arrogant for no reason? You are not the first one, nor the last one in that position. Vice Chancellor, you are not the first Vice Chancellor, you are not the last. <laughs> but I believe you have a many of to encourage you to stay focused in what you want to do. And whatever you say it if you mean it. You guys, don't cheat these girls that you shall marry them if you have no intention. <laughs> yeah. If you have no intention of marrying them, don't say you will marry them. Just say, let's be friends. <laughs> anything. If anything comes out of that friendship, well and good. But don't bed and kneel and say, oh, my dear. Without you, I cannot sleep. Oh. <laughs> you are honey among rocks. You are the lemon of the cluster. Let me tell you, my good people, be a truthful person. I met my wife way back when I was in campus. And I told her that I would marry her. 
And if I wanted to change my mind, I was already cornered. I had to marry her because I had said I'll marry her. Please. It's important that you do so. Why would you be great men and women? I've given you the example of President William Ruto, a hustler, a guy who was rearing chicken today. He's president of the Our series for gender and affirmative action comes from this county. She left school at the age of 11 because her parents did not have school fees. And a young girl, a baby, barely, having So you see a girl of 13 carrying another baby, two babies. But she had the courage to walk out of that go and educate herself privately into a secondary And with the determination, she was elected a councillor. Later on, she fought, and in 2013, she was elected as a woman rep for this great county of Kilifi. In 2017, she was elected In 2022, she fought a hard fight and came a credible second to Governor Mungara. But because of our commitment, because of being forthright, because of being consistent, and William Ruto appointed her as Minister for Gender and Affirmative Action. Today, Aisha Jumwa sits in the cabinet and flies the Kenyan flag. She educated herself and got a degree. She has successfully led the Kenyan delegation to the United Nations Women's Assembly and presented Kenya. That's a girl from here in Kilifi who was married off at the age of 13. But she didn't give up. She did not agree to give in to poverty. And the fact that she was married over as a young girl and served as a maid to the neighbors. And because of that, she had determination to succeed today. Has risen to be a cabinet secretary I want you to clap for Aisha Jomo. In this, I want to give a few examples uh, in this county in terms of scaling the lander leadership. Amazon Jaffa King, a poor boy from Magarini going to school barefoot, with nothing, with no reference. His father is not known, his mother is not known, his brothers are not known. He worked hard, passed with flying colors, and was admitted to Alliance High School. A Bachelor of Law degree. At the age of 34, at the age of 34, he was appointed a cabinet secretary in the Grand Coalition government of President Waikabaki. Later on, he was elected as governor of Kilifi for two terms. Today, as we speak, that poor boy from Magarini, who had nothing but sheer determination to someday is the Speaker of the Senate. I want to say, your own member of parliament here, the Honorable Owen Bayer, I'll be introducing him to you later, was just another character here in Kilifi. 
His father is not known. His mother is not known. We don't even want to mention the school. But he worked hard, went to school, got focused, and became a lecturer in this university. From there, he was appointed as county secretary of Kilifi. And from there, he was elected as member of parliament for Kilifi North, where he is serving the second term. And he is the deputy leader of the majority in the Wamanza, <laughs> A rural woman from the coast with nothing, no education, zero, no experience anywhere led the resistance against her. She single-handedly started the revolution here in the coast to fight the white man. Taken to prison and she never gave up. She was not a coward. She was a resistance. I want to say great people as I wind up, as I wind up, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to make a conscious decision that one day, someday, you shall be somebody in this great republic. Please make that decision. You can't. You can't be somebody someday if you disrespect your parents and those who are of the same age of your parents. You cannot be somebody someday if you cannot be make a decision. And you cannot be anybody if you are deceitful and you are not truthful and honest. I have come here to Dr. Puritan Gina, a poor girl from a village in Nyeri, who became the first PhD holder in mathematics. Twenty-eight years a PhD holder. Please sit down. I want to encourage you people also to be creative. And I really love the young people because of their creativity. What's my nickname? Because a young girl decided that Kenyans were having difficulty in pronouncing my name. Regardi Gashagwa is a difficult name. And she decided because Kenyans were liking me, especially the young people, she wants to make it easier for them to refer to me. And that young girl called Ivy, she came up with the word Rigiji. This year. You want to see her? Come here, they see you. And still single. <laughs> so this, this young girl, <laughs> so this young girl here called Ivy Chelimo is the inventor of Rigiji, which I have patented and it's a trademark. If you use it, you must pay me millions. <laughs> and because she's a lawyer by profession, she now works in my office as a strategist in matters communication. Please sit down. I've come here. I want to give you an opportunity to ask questions, isn't it? Do you want to ask me questions? But before you do, I've come here with some young leaders just to show you. Yeah? 
I want to invite one great young man, the one and only Peter Salasia. Three minutes. You want him to say something? Yeah. Aye. Asante. Asante. Ah, Professor Sivile. Alleluia. Ah, salam alaikum. Let me say my story. Bas, na juu wengi tuta kutana kwa na njia TikTok. Sasa leo mmoja tu zima. So nataka nishukuru sana leo kufika hapa Pwani University. Na mimi nataka nishukuru sana the management ya Pwani University kwa sababu you have been playing a very key role in inviting great people of this nation to come to speak to the young people. And I think this is the first university that I have invited the deputy president to come and speak to them. I've seen the other week we had some other visitors who have come. It means that you care about your fraternity and uh, the vice chancellor you deserve uh, to be clapped for, right? Uh, one thing I've learned from our deputy president is one. This is the first time that I'm sharing a platform with him. And uh, one thing is that lazima ufiche kitu fulani watu wengine wakuone yani wakudrao kidogo na lafu kuje onyeshe kitu fulani. Uwana, uwana tufiche nina kanga tu chizi chizi. Lakini, ikifika kwa ground, mwana vena napaka kazi. So that is how it means. It's only today I've known that the deputy president of Kenya, ni mutu alisona political science. Na alisona mumba ya literature. Na naogea kizungine jamu zana. So, hiyo, yani unawana anambia atuwe gine kizungine ake ni kido. Lakini mutu mwerebu. So, me, I can just say this, that... Whatever he has just shared is the truth of the matter. I remember in the year 2011, in the year 2011, when I was joining Igaton University for the, uh, as the first year, our lecturer took one hour just to give us a platform for each and every member of that school uh, uh, just to share his ambition of whoever he wants to become in the life. I didn't know that one day maybe I'll become a politician or I'll become anyone else. When it reached on my side, I just said that I want to be a pastor or a leader. And I had an ambition of being an MP. Sasa watu wanaanza kunyanyua wewe ni mwendazimu. You are a madman. They called me a madman. So, and because I had a big ambition. So one thing me, I'll just... I've dealt with I feel it's very difficult to help that person. It will ruin your life. When you do deputy president and Sema, it's a quarribu, it's a kufu mabema, it's a nini na nini. Wachana mama yu tunafanyari na kwa mama ya matiki ya mawakote yu. Wachana na hizo. We have to focus. So what's up? Asante ni sana na mungu wa mbari. Thank you. Asani makomi yu kwa Tito Salasia. The other one, the P is threat. Thought analysis is strength, weakness. Uh, opportunities and threats. I want to introduce to you the youngest senator in the Republic of Kenya who is an alumni of this university, the one and only Senator John Medu. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, the Vice Chancellor of this uh, University, 
Uh, my colleagues who are here and all the comrades. Comrades, power! Uh, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, September 2013, I joined this particular university. And uh, for all the comrades who are here, if anybody ever asks you what good com can come from one university, tell them that you have the best senator who has come from one university. Your Excellency, the Deputy President, what has been said here by the President of the uh, uh, Foreign University Student Association? Here, erected to serve as the Foreign University, uh, erected to serve as the Secretary General of the. Fourth year. Yeah. In my fourth year, I ran to be the uh, senator for Nyandarua. It was very difficult for me to uh, shuffle between being a comrade here and being a candidate at home. But I want to say something. The things that you've said, the problems that you have uh, stated here, I have lived all those problems and I know them, all of them, one by one. In fact, I know the president was only courteous. You should have said, Ikifika Jioni, Tunanda Pana Lava's Park, Nahatuna Wapenzi, Tunakoja Mahembe Yanguke, Yotukure, Yoyo Lanche, Yosiku Ipue. Comrades, power! The president has only been courteous, Your Excellency. If he was candid in the Ingekuwa Nisiku Ida ni Muti Yakusama Ukweli, Ange Kwambia Pana Gomez, Siku hile heru bimekuja, sisi tunakura kuku. Heru bikiendelea kuisha, tunakura na kuku. Heru bikiisha, tunakura kama kuku. <laughs> na angekuambia pana kwa mesi, siku kama wakati mwezi inafika kona, hapo tunakura wali dabu, na hakuna kitu ingira tunaweza, tunayakeo sufu na inakua sawa sawa. Your Excellency the Deputy President, kama President angekua muti ya kuambia ukweli, angekuambia on a very good day, tukienda huko kebaoni, Tunakula chapati mbili na mchicha. That is the best that we can. Na leo, leo nimesikia mbesema amutaki kura kama kuku, amutaki kura kuku, no, amutaki kura kama kuku, amutaki kura kama, na kuku, mnataka kukura kuku. Na mdosi ya mekuja mmemuona? Muna mutambua? Munajua naweza kufanya nyi mkule kuku? Hata naweza kufanya mkule mpaka mbuzi? Hata naweza kufanya mkule mpaka ngombe? Hata naweza kufanya mkule leo na kesho? Nini munajua huyu ni Deputy President wa Kenya? Your Excellency the Deputy President. Allow me to say the last thing that I want to say here. After leaving all those problems that you are mentioning here, His Excellency, the Deputy President, has told you, one day those people who are seated there will sit on this very bench that is uh, uh, in front here. If then you are looking for that person, I am that person who was here, seated just like you are seated here, from 2013 to 2017, seeing Professor James Kahindi, this one seated here, as my deputy vice chancellor, in the School of Humanities led by Professor Harimu Shauri, who is, I think, around here, taking Bachelor of Arts, Sociology and Political Science here. And now, I'm not seated with you, comrades, there. I'm seated here with the deputy president. Because it is possible that you can come from wherever you are seated, and you can sit on the front bench here. Your Excellency, the deputy president, my final thoughts on the comrades who are here. If then you want to sit on this front bench, there are many things that you have to do. Everything that has been said here is what you're supposed to do. But ultimately, ultimately, you must know that what brought you to this university is getting a degree. You can make many things. You can, uh, you can uh, make a lot of merry. You can go to Kibaoni, Wakati Mambo, Sawasawa. But don't forget, what brought you here is a degree. If you don't go with a degree at home, you shall have let down your parents who sent you here. Because the aspirations of your parents who could not become uh, 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 degree holders are held in you people. Your parents and your mother and your father are really working very hard. Wakienda kwa ofisi za wabunga wako hapa. Waki wataftia basari. How I wish that you, your parents would be the last people in your lineage to apply and look for basaries. Because you shall be empowered. You shall have the capacity to take your own children or end up at university or something like that. Because my own parents were looking, when I joined this university, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Nikitoka Bara Jambini, 
nilikuja na shilingi elfu kumi na tisa na hiyo ilikuwa utajiri yetu yote kama familia tulikuwa tumauza kila kitu na kila mtu mwenye anaweza uzika huko nyumbani <laughs> i came here i paid school fees for 11500 nikalipa uh, hostel hostel 1 mimi niko na ka hostel 1 room 5 nikalipa 4500 hiyo elfu tatu ilibaki ilifaa kuniweka mimi hapa tamu mzima uh, semester mzima and i was here and i never got any other money from home but it never stopped me from dreaming big and becoming a big person because tumeambiwa watu wa semester watu wakubwa sitawaambia mimi ni mtu mkubwa lakini kwa Kenya mzima watu kama mimi ni watu forces by post forces that keeps you apart had my co uh, colleagues in that course not been very very friendly to me for sure your excellency would not have graduated from this university because it was very very difficult for me to attend hiyo group work na kwenda nyumbani kufanya eh, siasa kwa hivyo kama uh, kama iko comrade mmoja amesahau kuja wakati ya group work tafadhali mumkubalishe asaini hapo chini na mumwambie siku nyingine comrade power comrade power i wish you well asanteni sana na Mungu awabariki thank you let me also introduce another great alumni from this university who has come from here and graduated risen through the ranks and is today the principal secretary for cabinet affairs in the office of the deputy president Idris Dakota one minute your excellency the deputy president observed comrades power. power comrades power. power today is your day your excellency stuck in your sana but i want to tell this young blood here that i was once here i joined this place in uh, this institution in 2010 and graduated in 2014 with bachelor's degree in commerce then later on i proceeded to china for my masters and phd i graduated in 2023 with phd in economics so from what our deputy president has actually outlined he has given us five very important uh, attributes he talked about uh, determination he talked about focus and when we talk about focus he talked about focused target and that is where we are missing it most of us tend to have focus but we don't have a focused target so as comrades let's have a focused target when i joined this place I think the time I came here other sick one school fees. So there was this gentleman called uh, Mr. Malau. I don't know if he's around here. He was one of the registrars. I had to go to his office, nimwambie bana, I can't make it here. So kindly help me. Ningie to class nisome, then I look for school fees. And that's how it started. Yeah? Because I had deferred twice. So by then ilikuwa itawezekana kuongeza tena mwaka mwingine. So with determination it's possible you can make it and I think I'll end it here. I'll organize for a day and have a great lecture with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. In our current national assembly we have many young people. Very young people. Allow me to request the chairman of the young parliamentarians the honorable mp for manyata inembu getonga mkoja young man come here thank you excellency all distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen comrades power, power. comrades power, power. Uh, as you've been told my name is getonga mukunji i'm the member of parliament of Manyata constituency in Embu and I'm also the chairman Kenya Young Parliamentarians I'm the chairman of Salasia <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your excellency we are also learning from you and every day when we accompany you and listen to your journey we get more inspired as leaders because most definitely we have not gotten where we are supposed to get your excellency 
in the year 2011, uh, a young man in the University of Nairobi was trying to get attachment. And Your Excellency, I tried to look for anybody that is connected from my village, but I did not get an attachment. That made me so depressed, but it was a journey that I was starting because I decided in my mind that I'm never going to look for a job again. It is simply because an attachment, you don't look for payment, you look for experience. I sat down and I remember in the next semester that we were coming to fourth year, we had a professor called Professor Munavu. And we were being taught a course in storing of energy and renewable energy. And I thought I need to get something that I need to do so that I don't ever look for a job again. Your Excellency, with my help money of 25,000, I knocked in an office of a lawyer in Nairobi town and I registered a company called ERS in my fourth year. I didn't know what to do, but I said I am going to be an employer and not an employee. I started writing letters to companies, national bank, almost all the banks that I could find on the road, telling them that I would like to be maintaining their power systems while at the same time I'm cleaning their server rooms so that they are clean. I wrote so many letters, Your Excellency, but one bank responded to me, but it did not respond with a job. It responded with a request that I come and clean their server rooms, take everything that is done, but not cost the bank even a single shillings. I started collecting old batteries from that bank. I collected batteries all over Kenya, and I sold them with the cages. I made 800,000 Kenya shillings within the first four months of collecting those batteries. I started a company, and I started getting a client, another client, another client. By the time I was completing my degree in engineering, I had already gotten an office, I had already gotten a few of my colleagues as employees, and today I am here after doing business for those years as the member of parliament of Manyata constituency. That is a story of many of you, because I know when it comes to getting a chance, is a problem. But I want to tell you something I normally say. I normally say, form ni kujituma. That is my slogan. Form ni kufanya nini? Na nasema usipojituma utatumwa. Na ukitumwa utatumiwa. So, young comrades, get opportunities in your problems. And you'll always get somewhere. Thank you very much, form ni kujituma. Asante, let me very briefly give three more because I want to answer your questions, isn't it? I want to invite a young engineer who is a member of parliament for Mgwen in other county, Jose Lemengit. Please clap for him and he come and say, one minute, be very brief. I want to show you that uh, we have very young leaders. Can you see? I want to prepare you for leadership. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Honorable Regadi Kashagwa, uh, the Vice Chancellor, the members of Parliament who are here present, led by our very own Member of Parliament, Owen Bayer, Comrades present, Comrades power. power, Comrades power. power. As you've heard, my name is Engineer Joseph Lelmengit, the Member of Parliament for Mgwen Constituency in Nandi County, at the Cap Sabet. Um, First and foremost, I would like to thank the organizers of this event, the school fraternity, for coming up with such a great 
uh, opportunity to welcome the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya to give his speech. Thank you, Your Excellency, because every time you give a speech, you give a motivation. Not only the students here are motivated, but also as young leaders get motivated. It's only today that I realize that uh, we share a lot in common. Before from, uh, coming, up, coming from a very humble background, I have a similar story. All of us who are here, life has a way of balancing things. And they say hard times create strong men. And strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. And the cycle continues. Personally, I schooled in a secondary school called Terige Secondary School, which was a boarding school. But I dropped out of school in Form 2 because my parents could not afford to pay school fees. I went to look for a casual laborer's job as a spanner boy repairing tire punctures for motorcycles in Nandi Hills constituency with the hope of saving some little money so that I could go back to school. Uh, luckily, the community came together and fundraised for my school fees. I did not go back to Terige High School, which is a boarding school. I went back to a school, a day school, a local day school called Toulon Secondary School. I worked hard. All the attributes that the president mentioned here, the, the virtues, hard work, determination, and focus, that is the things that I embraced. And luckily, God blessed me, and I got an A minus, less one point, I joined Jomo Kenyatta University of uh, Agriculture and Technology. I pursued a course in construction management. People call me an engineer because we are in that practice. What am I trying to say? We might despise our humble beginnings. But God in heaven, through your hard work and determination, will take you somewhere and to dine with kings and also show or portray your leadership. I am here, we you know, in political space, but I know with the deputy president and leadership, we are also feeling like we are leaders. And I want to challenge you today, comrades. You are also leaders in your own level, in your own level. Please lead your life. Make difficult choices. Focus and I know everything will become successful. Thank you, comrades. We love you. And we will also come back another time. Asante Nisana. Thank you. Let me introduce the chairman of the Finance Committee of the National Assembly, a second term member of parliament for Molo, Kuria Kemani, Elias KK, a young man again, who drives our financial and economic agenda in parliament. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I'll be very short. I was brought up by my grandparents. My mom was a single mom living in a rented house in Nakuru town. And when I finished, completed my high school, a day secondary school, and got an A minus, I knew that my life was doomed because there was no hope that despite me passing that while at university, there was nothing. We do a fundraise. I go to Kenyatta University to, to, to pursue a bachelor's degree in commerce. But I knew when I studied the market that for you to make a name in the finance sector, you need to be a CPA, you need to be a certified public accountant. Went to KCA University, took the, what do you call it, the fee statement. And when I look at the figures, I knew it was impossible. I borrowed notes of the students who were studying there. By the time I was completing my undergraduates, I was a certified public accountant started off in the financial sector as a finance assistant and rose all the way to be the regional finance manager for Africa region for United States Catholic Foreign Mission Society. In 2017, at an age of 28, I attempted to run for member of parliament for Molo constituency and won with a landslide. For the last 30 years, Molo constituency had never re-elected anyone, but again, in 2022, I was re-elected as a member of parliament for the great people of Molo constituency. The belief of young leadership by His Excellency the President and His Excellency the Deputy President made me the chairperson, the Committee of Finance and National Planning at the National Assembly. Our job is to raise revenue for the government of Kenya, is to oversight institutions such as the Central Bank of Kenya, Kenya, uh, Kenya Revenue Authority, the National Treasury, State Department of Economic Planning, Controller of Budget, and oversee 
all laws pertaining to matters of insurance, pensions, bankings, microfinance, digital lenders, and all that physical space at the age now of 34. For that is proof that His Excellency the President and His Excellency the Deputy President believe in young people. Despite my very busy schedules, I've been able to complete my Master's in International Business Management from Strasbourg Business School, and now I just completed my coursework for my PhD at the University of Nairobi. <laughs> Learning never stops, continue to learn. When I left home to join first year at Kenyatta University, I knew I was not going back tomorrow. I knew there was nothing to go back to. And when I went back, I went back driving my Prado. I went back supporting the community. I've sponsored thousands of students. I have people that I've educated who are now doctors, who are now teachers with my own money, even before I became a member of parliament. When God gives you a chance, because I know for sure that God will give you a chance to be a great person in this republic, please remember to give back to the society. Remember to hold someone else's hand because they'll hold your hand tomorrow. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you. Even as uh, we encourage you to be ambitious in leadership, I also want you to be ambitious in relationships. I want to give you an opportunity for the young men here. Maybe you could be lucky to get a girlfriend who is a member of parliament. Can I introduce you to one? The women rep for Krenyaga, Gasheri from Krenyaga, a very young girl who is a member of parliament and the women rep for Krenyaga come and say jam. And she's single, so Vijana Mwangariye Visuri. Your Excellency, <laughs> na students wa Pwani University. Mko salama. Good afternoon. My name is Njeri Maina, the county MP. I'm a woman rep, Kirinyaga County. And I just want to be very short in my analogy. I graduated from the University of Nairobi <laughs> around five years ago. So five years ago, I was seated where you seated, a student at the University of Nairobi. <laughs> Top of my class in law school, I just want to inspire you. We are here so that we can share, so that you can feel inspired and know that young people can lead and can lead well and with honor. Top of my law school got admitted and then I decided to look for a job. Two months down the line, I figured the 8 to 9, 8 to 5 p.m. wasn't my kind of thing. So I quit. Started my own small law firm. 90% of the clients that I took were pro bono, I'm a free. So I would work for free so that I can earn my time in practice and learn how to be a great lawyer. One year down the line, after opening my small law firm, comes 2022. I decided that I want to vie for Kirinyaga woman representative. And you know, in life you have challenges. Someone that I looked up to told me, you will get maybe a thousand votes and it's going to be very embarrassing for you because CSA Kenya ni pesa. And young people, hawana pesa, ama ni aje? And I decided, well, let me try. So I told my then mentor, watch this space. I did not only get elected, I got elected with 70% of all the registered voters of Kirinyaga County. <laughs> and life, like I've said, has challenges. During the elections, two weeks to UDA nominations, Your Excellency, you know, I've, I've never even told you this. I lost my father through a tragic road accident. I was very close to my dad. So for me, I just wanted to take time and just go rest. But I knew that party elections are coming up. If I am not on the ground asking for the votes, I will lose the seat. Young people, you have time. But time is very, it is an illusion. It is there and it is not there. You're 20 today. 10 years from now, you'll be 30. Another 10 years, you'll be 40. What will you do with your time? 
And time, like they say, waits for no man or woman. So even as you're trying to figure things out, remember that time is not going to wait for you to put things in order. When you get a window of opportunity, and I saw a window of opportunity in 2022, you must ensure that you take total and full advantage of the same so that you can make a future for yourself and make your parents proud. After elections, Nikaenda Bunge, you know I'm young. How old do I look? 20? 27. I am Nikaenda Bunge. So you know in Bunge, they see a young girl. They're like, Mrembo, Mrembo. I'm like, I am not Mrembo. Mimi ni wakili. You know, I've gone to school, ni mesoma. And uh, my good friend, KK, gave me really good advice. Thank you so much. Kuria Kimani. Aliniambia, Gasheri, when you come to Bunge, do not market yourself as a young person. Because age is an illusion. Youth is an illusion. Youth is at a Kenya legally 35 years. And that time flies, young people. And I want to inspire you today to tell you that you can be anything you want in this world. Do not listen to the naysayers. People will tell you that you can't, that you shouldn't, that you daren't, that you mustn't but show them what you can do. And allow me as I wind up to thank His Excellency for holding the hands of young people, for showing us the way, because leadership is about mentorship. And if we don't, do not mentor the young generation, who is going to take over? And I tell you, young people, you're not the leaders of tomorrow. You are the present and the future. Are you ready to take over? Mkotayari. Aya sasa nikimalizia najua mnataka kabash kidogo ama mtaki bash Kama rigijia kwa hapa kweli anaweza ondoka kama hajapanga bash Vijana si lazima wafurahie Asanteni sana God bless you Aya Wangapi mnataka namba yake Aya mko na kalamu 0722516793456 Aya When uh, <coughs> I was member of parliament for Madeira constituency before President William Ruto nominated me as his running mate. And I decided that uh, I needed my replacement to be a young person. There were many other people of my age, qualified, with all the leadership qualities. But I was persuaded that we must remain true to what we say, that we must mentor young people. I therefore recommended to the people of Madeira, if they are so persuaded to consider giving a young person a chance to be their member of parliament after me, and I therefore want to invite Honorable Eric Wamombi, the man who replaced me as member of parliament for Madeira. Please give him my every hand. Comrade Power, Comrade Power, Your Excellency, all protocols observed. My name is Eric Wamumbi, a son of a single mother and a graduate of Kenyatta University with a bachelor's in actuarial science and who proceeded to do a master's in financial mathematics. Your Excellency, we must thank you for taking it upon yourself to mentor us young people, to hold our hands and your excellency, we must tell you, as young people of this nation, that when your time come, we young people, we will also stand with you because you have taken it upon yourself to mentor us, to walk with us, to show us the way, and to guide us, your excellency. When your time come, your excellency, we will also stand with you. Finally, your excellency, let me tell these comrades, most of us, or most of you, are lost into the waves of negative attitude. You are there telling yourself that in your village there is no one who have ever excelled. There is no one who have ever uh, become something. You are, you are there telling yourself in your home after when you are mesoma, there is no one who have ever become something. If you are in your village, there is no one who have ever become something. If in your home, there is no one who have ever excelled, then desire, aspire 
to be the first person in that village to become something. Then desire and aspire to be the first person in your home and in your village to become something. Don't be lost in negative attitude. Always put a number of positive attitude. I will be the first person in that village to make it. God bless you. And the last speaker will be your local member of parliament, but before I call him, let me introduce the deputy governor, Kilifi Flora Mbesa. Let me introduce uh, the MP for Lamu West, Honorable Stanley Mudama Makofi. Let me introduce the senator of Lamu County, Joseph Geduku, Pigeni Makofi. Let me introduce the one who entertained you, the former MP for Starehe, Charles Jagua Kanye Pigeni Makofi. Let me introduce our Chief Administrative Secretary for Foreign Affairs and former Women Rep for Laikipia, Kate Warugoro Makofi. Let me introduce the Chairman of the Kenya Ports Authority, Benjamin Tayari Makofi. Let me now request the local member of parliament for Kilifi North, who was also a lecturer in this great institution, the Honorable Owen Bayer, the deputy leader of the majority in the National Assembly, in one minute. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Comrades Power, nice to be here at Pony University again, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy President, for uh, honoring this invitation to speak to the students and uh, fac faculty here at uh, Pony University. You have said very great things to these young people, and I look forward that this talk that you have had uh, with these young people will translate into something really, really great, so that we bring up a nation of young people, exuberant, happy people who know what they want in life. Your Excellency, there are many issues that university students go through. But one of the things that uh, they do is to give up in life. But this speech that you have given us here today uh, will uplift their morale and boost what they want to become. I am happy that you have brought these young people uh, here today from Parliament, and I am sure very many of you want to be like them, isn't it? I would like to have as many young people in Parliament. They didn't say that. I also mentor them in Parliament, uh, these young people. I hold their hand. <laughs> They're always telling me, leader, help us in this one. But I also want to tell you just one thing, if you allow me, uh, Your Excellency, that uh, as you stay here, when I was a lecturer here, one person that played a significant role in my growth was Professor Katana, who I have seen here. Uh, I don't know whether you know Professor Katana. He was once uh, at DBC. So I saw this advertisement that was asking for people to apply for training in Germany. And I applied for it, but I was not confident. And then I, I went to Professor Katana. I asked him, can I apply for this? He said, yes, yes, and I will recommend you. So he wrote that uh, recommendation letter and gave me, and I put my papers, and he looked through my application and everything and looked at it and said, this is OK. So we sent it. And I was nominated. Uh, I went to Germany to study in a program called UniLead, my first scholarship abroad. Professor Katana did it for me. I don't know who you are talking to in this university as you are here? Who, which professor is holding your hand? Who are you working with for your future? You can't work and walk this journey alone. You need someone else to hold your hand. These professors can do a good job to mentor you and put you in the best position. When I, I, I applied for a Fulbright scholarship, I, I am a Fulbrighter, I need to tell you that. When uh, uh, I applied for a Fulbright scholarship, there are two people who told me, oh, and apply for this, Professor Katan and Professor Rajab then. And I went to Professor Katan again, I told him I've come back, and he recommended me. I went to Professor Rajab, he recommended me. I went to the United States of America to study as a Fulbright scholar then, because people recommended me. Who is going to recommend you as a year student here? I want to thank you, Deputy President, for this great privilege, and welcome again to Pony University. Thank you very much. Thank you. If we have a microphone to go around, we can take a few questions on leadership and development. Uh, let's focus on leadership and development. If we have a few questions, we can try to answer to the best of our ability. But don't ask me too, too hard questions. I'm a simple guy. 
Okay. The microphone is not working. Give her a good microphone. Proceed. His Excellency, the Deputy President, all deputies present, and member of the Director. Angolina Jilani, aka the Captivity of America. Very good. The Gender Social Welfare and Special Representative of Family Service. My question to the Deputy President is who will come to the aid of our rescue? Please, please, please repeat the question. It got lost in the clapping. Thank you. Talk to the second lady, Dr. R Dokas Gachagua, so that he can she can work closely with the guidance and counseling office in our universities. And by ex extension, by office, the gender and social welfare representative, so that we can mentor a strong leadership. Because I believe a stable mind is equal to stable future leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Wamwenza. <laughs> but I thought uh, Pastor Dokas was here to talk to you. She wasn't here. I think she was here, isn't it? But I agree. Who will help the male? The boy child in Kenya is in trouble. And uh, the boy child needs affirmative action. Our I think the intervention for the girl child worked so hard. Vijana wakasaulika. Lakini mipia ni muambie nyinyi vijana. Maisha ya mtoto wa kiume ni mulima kutoka kusaliwa kwake mpaka kufa because lazima uangane lazima ufanye nini because our warembo wetu our sisters these beautiful girls if life became very difficult she knocks the first house the second and the third chances are somebody will open for her Wewe ukikonga mlango ya kwanza ya pili utaitiwa polisi. Ni kweli ama ni uongo? So we really need also the boy child. Much as we are talking of affirmative action, we must believe in ourselves. And we cannot afford to give up to depression and suicide. It is true what Mekatabili is saying. We are having many suicide uh, cases across the country and in our universities where our young people, especially the men, give up because of the challenges of life. I want to encourage you, Vice Chancellor, please strengthen your counseling unit and work with the student leadership. Let us have psychologists, let us have pastors and imams to talk to our young people. My request and appeal to you as young people, when the world becomes too tough, when the going becomes tough, when you are having challenges, don't withdraw into yourself. Please speak out. When you speak out, you let off, and somebody will hear you. Many of the cases of suicide, 90% of them, if the people suffering severe depression and stress, mental stress, had chosen to share with a close friend, with a pastor, with an imam, with a lecturer, with somebody whom you think cares, those suicides would have been avoided. I want to appeal to you, please, don't suffer in silence. Speak out. I'll ask uh, Pastor Dokas to get in touch. Mekatalidi, utanipatia namba yako. Nitamuambia muonge. I think one of, one of my people can pick her number. Uh, 
Mwonge, uh, and we see how we can help each other. But I want you to speak out. Please don't suffer in silence. Silence is killing. Don't carry the entire load. Don't carry the entire world. It's too heavy for you. If you find that you are getting mentally disturbed because of what is around you and your life, probably you have no school fees and your parents are not able and you feel embarrassed when you are deferred and you suffer in silence, you sink into depression, you are likely to lead to a mental breakdown. And that is what results to insanity or suicide. Please, let's speak out. Another question? Sasa kijana ya kiume kwanza sasa affirmative action. Because we gave a girl now, give a guy there. Yes. Uh, Your Excellency, Deputy President, comrades, habarizeno. Uh, my name is Kale Bonyancha. I'm from Kisi County. So here goes my question. I'm a young guy, a hustler, who has got a burning desire of uh, venturing into leadership. Actually, the Deputy President, I want to vie for the Member of Parliament, Bobasi constituency. But here is the challenge. We as young people, we are not believed by the society. Society to our mini, kwa seduce ningumu. So, Your Excellency, talk to me. How can I make the society to believe that I have got the potential of leading them as a young guy? Because I'm young and energetic, yes. and I can do it. I can. You have the potential, I have no doubt, but you must begin by believing in yourself. Yes. Isn't it? These young leaders here, these ones, they are young people. They talked and society listened to them. You must be confident, my brother Onyancha. You must be confident. I have heard you speak, you speak well, you are eloquent. Go out there and talk to the people. Talk to our women and don't talk to their head, talk to their hearts. When the way to get to a woman's acceptance is through the heart. Go and talk to the women, talk to their heart. Talk to young people. Tell them what you think you know and what you can do. The first step is believe yourself in yourself. Already you have started badly by thinking they will not listen to you. You haven't even talked to them. Please go and talk to them. I brought you examples. These are all young people from across the country. One is from Nandi, one is from Krenyaga, one is from uh, Mombasa. There is a uh, Salasia. He said nobody believed him. He is from Mumias. Hata mimi nilikuwa natafuta makasi ni mkata hiyo nyewele. You know, but he went there and talked. And he talked sense. And people believed him. You cannot give up before you start. So, when you break the semester, kweda ujaribu kidogo. Ingia kwa kikudi ya mpira hapo nyumbani, utafute kiti ya the local club. Unanzi hapo. Unaongoza hawa, unaenda pale kwa wasea nyumba kumi, unawaongelesha. Naona, you go to the local school, you do what I'm doing. Go and give a small lecture in the local primary school. That is the way. Then they can go and their parents. There is a young man called Onyancha. He's a student and one. He came here and he talked some sense. Dad, mom, can you listen to him? That's the way. Please, you cannot give up unless you first try. So, kweda ujaribu? Sindio? Haya, chukua namba yoki jana, tutambigia simu. I'll uh, connect you with a few leaders hapo kisi wakusaidie. Akina Sivana Zosoro wakupatia a few ideas. Sindio? So we'll be able to do that. Two more questions. One lady and then one man. Give one girl. Your Excellency Rigiji. Komajina ni kuloba e kuloba. Rigiji umesema kwamba ruto unamuadmire. Mi nataka kusema hapa sahi kwamba mimi ninakuadmire. Asante. <laughs> Asante. Your Excellency Rigiji, umetoka kuongea mambo ya busara sana hapa. Ukasema kwamba e, kulikuwa na deep state ilikuwa na wasumbua. Swali langu ni je, na uka professor ukasema kwamba kutakuwa na president 
kutoka hapa ukasema pia kutakuwa na magavana na etc etc na mimi kitambo nilikuwa najua kwamba ndio ukue president lazima ukue na deep state swali so, langu ni je deep state ingine itakuja ama haitakuja mwisho kabisa rigiji ningependa baada ya hapa nikusalimie kidogo kwa sababu you are my idol nipige hata na wewe picha asanteni sana mungu wabariki ah, kuja kuja unisalimie kuja 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 hata yote jana kuja chawe haya wapi photographer haya kuja 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 <laughs> Let me assure you, my brother, the system and the deep state nonsense was buried dead never to be resurrected in Kenyan politics on the 9th of August 2022. The power belongs to the people. The sovereignty of this country, Article 1 of the Constitution, rests with the people of Kenya. It is the people of Kenya in a democratic process with regular elections every five years in accordance to our constitution, who will decide who will lead them. The chiefs of this world have no role. The police officers of this nation have no role. Never again shall this country, at least for the time President William Ruto and I are in charge, shall we ever allow government functionaries to take over the process of determining the leadership of this country. The leadership of this country, right from the member of the county assembly, member of national assembly, the senator, the women rep, the governor, the president, and his deputy, will be decided through a fair, verifiable, democratic process on the ballot. And that will happen every five years. I want to persuade you and encourage every Kenyan who has a desire to lead, to present your credentials to the people of Kenya in the respective area of jurisdiction that you want to lead and argue your case, and the people of Kenya will decide. And as the late Kenneth Matiba used to say, let the people decide. No deep state and system nonsense. That is dead and buried, never to be distracted. Last question. Napatia, uh -huh. from here. His Excellency and all protocol observed. Good afternoon. Yes, my name is Amina Mohammed, the current academic secretary elect. So my question goes to the new funding system. It goes hereby. So the new higher education funding model which the KK administration, Kenya Kwanza administration role last year, we know that the model was ideally established to help the alleviate and constraints experienced by the vulnerable students. So factually speaking, Your Excellency, the program has created more challenges contrary to the desired intentions. So lack of knowledge and understanding of how the models operate completely, and this has been occasioned by blatant failure to involve the real stakeholders in the program, who include the students and the parents. What mechanism exactly does your government have in involving the student leaders in making decisions and policies? That's my question. And we have our fellow student leaders who can talk? Thank you very much. Um, to make, we shall create a mechanism so that we can listen to you because President William Ruto is a believer that a good idea must give room to a better idea, and a better idea ultimately will give room to the best idea. 
we are willing to receive more ideas on how we can improve it. But one of the reasons why we came up with this model, it wasn't fair to give loans to everybody blanket. This is the reason. You can afford to take your child to a preparatory kindergarten where you pay 200,000 shillings a term. You move from there, you take your child to a high cost school where you pay 400,000 shillings a term. Then, when you go to university, the government gives you a loan. Yet the money is not enough for everybody. So you are saying, those who are able to pay from kindergarten to primary school to secondary school, let them pay all the way to the university. And we are saying, again, there are those who can't pay anything because they are not able. Let us give those ones money that is not loaned. They are those who have a little, but they need to be loaned a little because they can pay. So we have the vulnerable group, those you assist them. We have the less vulnerable, they take a certain percentage as grant and a certain percentage as loan. But I am saying, I hear you. We'll create the PS is here. I'll ask her to come here and talk. The PS has come for higher education. And I think she'll be in agreement with me that we have no problem in creating a mechanism, PS, to listen to student leaders on how we can improve the financing model. Because we are, believe we are a government that is democratic. We are a government that listens to its people. We are a government with leadership who believe we don't know everything. And we don't have a solution to everything in life. So I'll ask the PS to create a mechanism where a few student leaders from each of our universities can be accorded an opportunity to give an input in the financing model and wherever we need to make adjustments, it is not static, life is dynamic, so is the financing model. We are amiable, we are open for discussion with student leaders and where they can give a useful contribution that is practical, we can be able to do so. I really want to thank you and uh, before I finalize, because we really have to keep on going, I think I want to ask the PS to come and say Jambo, uh, our PS for higher education, Beatrice Inyangala, please give her a heavy welcome to come and say Jambo. Uh, then before I can make uh, two comments on what the president asked me. So Madam PS, you can say something. Your Excellency, our Deputy President, Honorable Rigadi Kashagwa, all the leaders present here, and comrades, Mimi ni Mama Enu. How are you? I'm very happy to join our Deputy President here. And um, just to add to everything that has been said, do not look for leadership opportunities outside of your space. Start in your classroom, lead a discussion, lead a group, lead a project, and that's how you will slowly by slowly build the leadership skills you need outside of the university environment and out of the classroom. About the funding model, um, I want to assure you that we have received very positive feedback after implementing the model for one year. 20% of the students did not get loans or scholarships because their families were able and they paid. 18% were supported up to 95%. 25% loan and 70% grant. The households only contributed 5%. So if you take a program that is uh, 200,000, um, that is costed at 200,000, it means your family only paid 10,000. 5,000 in the first semester and 5,000 in the second semester. So I want to assure you that this model has actually opened opportunities for all our students, for all the programs they qualify for, irrespective of their socioeconomic background, consistent with our bottom-up 
economic transformation agenda and working with the very vulnerable. We are now receiving feedback and my teams will come to this university and engage you. We are engaging all the stakeholders, collecting feedback, which we shall use to re-engineer the model. Otherwise, thank you very much for being good students, for supporting our leaders, and I want to assure you, you're very lucky to have leaders who care about you and who want to create the next generation of leaders from among you. Asante Nisana. Let me introduce Dr. Fred Mudama, who was Secretary General of your Students Association. Oyo Mpigeni Yamakofi, please clap for him, Asante Sana. Now, uh, where are you going to go? Who passport? Eh? Who has a passport? You can tell me that you have a safari, but you can tell me passport. Eh? Adi? Sasa is not possible. Eh? Sasa is not possible. Aya, aya, wacha nione. Now, uh, let's do the following. Two things. Mumefurai ya masugumuso yetu? Yes. Would you like me to come another day? Yes. Have you learned something? Yes. Do you feel mentored? Yes. Do you feel encouraged? Yes. Are you ready to be leaders of this country? Yes. How many of you are now ready to be leaders of this country? Asante sana. When I came, we had a discussion with the Vice Chancellor. He made two requests that I would like to answer. Uh, P.S. The Vice Chancellor has requested that uh, they have a huge population and they don't have a multipurpose hall. That is where we are in this tent. And I think uh, between myself and the P.S., we will look for money in the next financial year and then we support you to put up a... And we are going to tarmac all your roads within the institution. Finally, what do you preso? Would you say money panga money no kidogo? Kuja kuja. Now that I'm here, I'm going for iftara in Malindi. And uh, now that I'm here, I have heard what he has said. Let me organize some little money. I love mutaku and a bash kidogo. I'll give him uh, uh, one million shillings. Yeah, yeah.